Tom Cruise fans were thrilled to be able to watch him in action in the newest Mission Impossible movie, Dead Reckoning Part 1. It's the seventh installment in the Mission Impossible series, and it was a monumental project with stunts, fight sequences, and advanced visual effects. Welcome to Galore Tex. Today, we're going to deep dive into the world of Ethan Hunt's newest mission to see what technological feats were achieved to make this stunning, action-packed movie. Directed by Christopher McQuarrie and starring Tom Cruise, the film's production was complex and meticulously planned endeavor, emphasizing realism and practical effects wherever possible. The original net budget for the movie was $219 million, and the film did a box office business of, well, about $567.5 million. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 has garnered significant critical acclaim for its thrilling action sequences, practical stunts, and compelling narrative. Critics have praised the film's innovative use of practical effects and Tom Cruise's dedication to performing his own stunts. The movie received positive reviews from major film review platforms such as Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb, with particular commendation for Christopher McQuarrie's direction and the performances of the cast, especially Cruise and Haley Atwell. In fact, it's the first ever Mission Impossible movie to be nominated in Academy Awards. The production team, led by McQuarrie and Cruise, aimed to push the boundaries of action cinema. The planning stage involved extensive pre-visualization and location scouting. McQuarrie, known for his skepticism towards over-reliance on visual effects, preferred practical stunts instead. Right off the bat, the most amazing and iconic scene in this movie is the motorcycle cliff jump. It's one of the most intricate and daring stunts ever performed in film. This scene features Tom Cruise riding a motorcycle off a cliff and then base jumping to the ground, a stunt that required extensive preparation and execution. This sequence shot in Norway combined practical effects with digital enhancements to ensure both safety and not compromise the visceral impact of the stunt. To achieve this, Tom Cruise underwent rigorous training, including 500 hours of skydiving practice and completing 13,000 motorbike jumps to perfect the timing and technique needed for this stunt. The filming of this sequence took place on the first day of shooting, which was a strategic decision to ensure that, well, in case of accident, the production could adapt early in the schedule. The stunt was performed using practical effects with minimal CGI. Crews rode a specially rigged motorcycle up a large ramp built on the edge of a cliff in Norway. As he approached the ramp, he accelerated to a precise speed before launching himself off the edge. The motorcycle was equipped with safety wires that were later removed digitally in post-production. Cruise then deploys a parachute mid-air and completes the jump safely. The visual effects team played a crucial role in enhancing the realism of the scene. Although the jump was real, they used CGI to blend multiple takes, ensuring continuity and visual coherence. The team also digitally removed the safety rigging and wires, creating a seamless final product that maintained the authenticity of 61-year-old Tom Cruise's daring feat. While the film prioritized practical effects, visual effects played a crucial role in enhancing and completing many of the scenes. The VFX team, led by Simone Coco and others, worked on removing or replacing elements rather than adding them. For example, during the yellow Fiat 500 car chase in Rome, digital versions of the vehicles were used to remove camera gear that was visible in the shots. 99% of the car chase scene was shot on location. The production wasn't allowed to let the cars actually touch the Spanish steps, because they're, after all, a historical landmark. So what they did was they built an exact replica of the landmark on a back lot and tumbled the vehicle down there. They populated that with a combination of extras captured and motion controlled against green screen and digital crowd to fill out those shots. The main challenge for the filming team was the camera rigging on the cars in order to capture the performances of the actors driving those cars. They used CG cars to help clean up the camera or stunt rigging a lot of the time. The main vehicles that the actors were driving and a couple of cars around them that they had to interact with were driven by stunt drivers. But the rest of the congestion and traffic being weaved through? That was digital a lot of the time. Sometimes car interiors were digitally recreated and the reflection on windscreens was removed. Fun fact. Did you know that the production team changed the engine in the Fiat to a 500 horsepower electric vehicle engine? And that's how it basically became a beast in the movie. The use of green screens over modern techniques like the volume was another conscious choice. The film's extensive use of reflective surfaces and the need for large-scale practical effects made green screens a more viable option. For the sandstorm scene, 
traditional wind machines were supplemented with a jet engine to create an intense and realistic environment. The sandstorm sequence was inspired by Lawrence of Arabia and involved creating a powerful wind effect using that jet engine while providing the necessary volume and force to make that scene believable. This approach, while damaging to the equipment, exemplified the film's commitment to authenticity. The train fight sequence was another spectacular feat of filmmaking and visual effects. The scene involved both practical and digital effects to create a seamless and thrilling experience. The sequence was broken down into several story beats, including fights on top of and inside the train, the train traveling through a tunnel, and its eventual derailment and bridge collapse. Most of the train sequences were shot on location in Norway and parts of the UK, with some shots done against a green screen on a backlot. A significant challenge was ensuring that all these shots matched the look of the Norwegian location. The environment team meticulously recreated the surrounding trees and forests digitally just to maintain that continuity. Full-size replica Orient Express carriages were used to create tilting effects up to 90 degrees for the derailment scene. Visual effects included adding steam, wind, debris, and simulating the bridge collapse. This combination of real stunts and CGI created a seamless, thrilling action sequence. Now it's time where we talk a little bit about the camera equipment used in this movie. The primary camera used was the Sony Venice, selected for its exceptional performance in low light conditions and its versatility. This camera features dual native ISOs of 500 and 2500, which allows it to capture clear and detailed images even in dimly lit alleyways and canals of Venice. In addition to the Sony Venice, the film employed the Z-Cam E2F6 for several of its action sequences. The Z-Cam E2F6 was chosen for its durability, its weather sealing, and its efficiency. It boasts a full-frame CMOS sensor, capable of recording in 6K at 60fps and 4K at 120fps, making it ideal for capturing high-speed stunts and detailed imagery in challenging environments. This camera was particularly useful during scenes involving complex setups and dynamic movements such as the train crash sequence, where multiple Z-Cam E2F6 units were strategically placed to capture the action from various angles. The film's cinematography was overseen by Fraser Taggart, who aimed to maintain the traditional Mission Impossible aesthetic while still integrating modern technologies. Taggart utilized Panavision C-Series anamorphic lenses, which are known for their ability to produce a classic widescreen cinematic look. Now, These lenses, combined with the digital flexibility of the Sony Venice, really allows for a seamless blend of old and new visual styles. Moreover, the integration of IMAX certified cameras for certain sequences ensured that the film's visuals were stunning on large format screens. Now, one of the most innovative uses of technology in the film was the Sony Venice's Rialto Extension System. This system detaches the camera sensor block from the body, allowing for more agile and compact setups. It was paired with Steadicam and the Stabilize Gimbal to achieve fluid and immersive camera movements during fight scenes and other high-energy moments. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2 is scheduled to release next year in May after being delayed by the 2023 SAG After Strike. So, tell us, are you excited for yet another action-filled movie starring Tom Cruise? Tell me down in the comments. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more interesting Galore Text videos. Thanks for watching.